Hi everyone, James at BitPay here at the Consensus booth for BitPay. I'm here with Naomi Brockwell, emceeing the event. Uh, I'm curious, as an MC for Consensus, and you, I believe you've done this multiple years now. Yes, yes, I have. From your bird's eye view, what's the most exciting thing about the conference this year? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, every year is completely different, and I think that's the most exciting thing. You never really know what the space is going to look like in another year's time. Things change at lightning speed in this industry. So my favorite thing is just getting a ground feel for what the buzz is of that year. Like, what direction are people going in? It's always slightly different, and so uh, it's it's really exciting just to see all these different businesses working in this space they're working on this cutting edge tech and it kind of makes me feel like I'm living in the future you know like these people are living light years ahead of everyone else so it's a it's a great experience for me well speaking about light years ahead you've been doing this for as long as I remember you've been early adopter in the Bitcoin world and early also in the just the Bitcoin media world one of the first artists and creators to really come into this space and make it your own so I'm, super, I'm curious, when you looked into the Bitcoin world back in the day, when you, when you first started, I think the Bitcoin Girl music video was one of the first? It was. Actually, my brand Bitcoin Girl uh, preceded the, uh, the music video, and the music video really kind of cinched it, and yes. I, now I can't shake it. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I had my Bitcoin Girl music video brand. I was working at the New York Bitcoin Center doing interviews there. And so I started, I, I sort of learned about cryptocurrency. I started hearing about it in 2012, I think. 2013, I started making videos and working at the center. And and, um, and that was an experience. Like the New York Bitcoin Center back in the day was like nothing you'd seen. It was a really exciting place. We had debates there. There were always developers around just coding up things and, and working. It was a great experience. And so I started working under the, the moniker Bitcoin Girl for, for that because it wasn't taken. So I was like, all right, I'll take it. Um, and then from there, I think the following year, about a year later, I, I did a Bitcoin Girl music video and now everyone's like, it's the Bitcoin girl. I'm like, oh, I'm sure I have other credentials, but apparently not. It's, it's a shame. Right. You, can't, you can't shake your biggest hit. It's a one hit wonder, you know? But one you've hit had so, you've had so many. <laughs> one hit wonder. That, that isn't quite what I meant to say. You are still so active in the, in the Bitcoin world now, the blockchain world. It's gotten a lot bigger. Tell us about some of the projects you're working on right now. Right now, gosh, I've got a lot of, lot of things working on. So I, I've been going full time with my show for the last year. And that was a great step because already I was working working as an MC in the space for many, many years. And during 2017, when we saw the giant bull run, I was doing a couple of international conferences a month. So it was hectic and fascinating. What I was saying before about keeping your ears to the ground about what's going on, being able to keep your ear to the ground in multiple countries, you know, and it was just fascinating. You get such an interesting perspective of, of all the different niches around the globe. So that was great. Um, since then, I mean, I'm still doing MC work, but really focusing on leveraging all the amazing people I've been meeting at conferences and finding ways to put that into easily digestible content so that other people can learn about this. Because if it's really exciting for me, and I don't come from a tech background, I wanted to find ways to repackage that so that I could share with other people and say, hey, look at this industry. It's really cool. You know, learn, learn about it with me. So that's what I've been mainly focusing on. Um, I've also been working on a TV series called The Hard Fork Series, which is a sci-fi thriller and I'm a, I'm a producer on that it's uh, Doug Carr is our director he's a Sundance alumni and um and we've got Christopher James Baker, who was in uh, a bunch of shows that you would have seen and loved on, on Netflix and, and other, other studios. So that, that's been a really interesting project. We've been working on that for a couple of years now and, and still going with that, still developing that. But I'm, I'm really happy to be part of that team. I'm quite, very excited to see that. Is the hard fork a reference to blockchain <laughs> crypto? Or well, it's a, yeah, it's a reference to a plot point in there, but it's really just this gritty world that kind of shows all side of blockchain tech. We wanted to create a project that provided the non-cliche narrative that you would have expected from like a Hollywood studio. I mean, since since then, a, a movie called Cryptos has come out. I don't know if anyone has seen that. It didn't get very good press. Um, but I think it's everything you, you would expect from a blockchain thriller where there's like junk dealers and bad people. Like, I mean, this world is so nuanced and multi-dimensional that we made sure that we had awesome tech people on board, like Patrick Bird is an advisor, um, yeah, Jason King is an advisor. Um, uh, they're just really awesome people on the project who understand crypto, and so we're hoping that that will be the big difference between us and other projects. That's very exciting, and, and again, you've touched all sides of media and the Bitcoin world. Looking out now in 2019, 
Um, what do you think the biggest gaps are still? I mean, where are the content gaps in Bitcoin that people like you, you're excited to go in and explore um, how to fill them? I'd like to see people covering these real world use cases. It's hard to cover other sides of blockchain tech without being too brand specific because you've got some people right now who are working on applying this uh, blockchain tech to specific industries but you kind of have to look at it through the lens of their company. I'm always um, you know, careful with doing that because we have seen a lot of fluff in this space. We have seen companies who just add the word blockchain to their company um, you know, in order to increase revenue. So it's, uh, it's a lot of a a lot of stuff to wade through and to actually gauge, you know, what's what's some real meaty stuff that's going on. So that's been a fun experience for me, though. You've seen it all, and I'm curious, you know, for new content creators coming into the space, is there any advice you'd give them when they're starting out? Use it. I see a lot of cryptocurrency uh, reporters out there who aren't involved apart from reporting on it. I don't think you can really understand this stuff unless you're actually using it. Um, and otherwise you're really only getting a one-dimensional view there. So I encourage them to get involved and find ways that this can be applied to their life. It may be slightly more inconvenient, but if you can be a trailblazer for setting the way and teaching others how this can be integrated into your life, then that, that's a good thing. And final left turn here, one of the big themes of consensus in other, <laughs> other blockchain conferences has been the growing emergence of the crypto art scene. And we've talked about video interviews, we've talked about um, all the formats you've worked in, movies. Tell me about Opera. Why should, why should blockchain crypto people why should, why should Opera come back? Why should it come back? <laughs> I don't know if Opera should come back. Um, <laughs> and I'm presuming you're asking that question because I moved to the United States as an opera singer. That's yes, how I that's started true. out here. I, um, you know what? I actually tweeted the other day about maybe making a Bitcoin musical. And I had this offhand comment because I'm like, this seems like a fun thing that I could do. And I got it got so much attention. Everyone was like, absolutely do this. And that was shocking to me because I'm used to this world where I would make a Bitcoin music video and you know people would be like, oh, that's cheesy and niche and would have no audience. And it's amazing to now put out similar ideas and have everyone on board saying, this is what we need. Because I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure that we need a Bitcoin musical, but it would be Fun. A tragic opera, perhaps. A I tragic. Mean, I can definitely the see fork, that. The fork, you know, <laughs> two sides clashing against each other, both alike in dignity. Um, no, it's a uh, opera. I don't think I can magically weave any relationship into uh, crypto in this conversation. I wish I had like some nice little tie-in. It's just a very different interest of mine that I has been in my life and um, and I maybe one day I'll be able to find a tie-in there. That would that would kind of be fun. I wouldn't be against that. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, Naomi. Do you, um, where can people find you online and find your work? Uh, well, I have a channel. I'm putting out crypto content every day on Naomi Brockwell TV. So that's on YouTube and BitChute and library.io and memo.cash and steamit and minds.com and bitbacker.com and any other decentralized platform or our alternative media platform, I'm also on there. So come find me, it's under Naomi Brockwell. Awesome, thanks so much Naomi. Thanks so much for chatting with me.